Pianist Brendan Kavanagh, aka Dr. K, was entertaining crowds at St Pancras Station in London on the public piano there when he was approached by a group of flag waving Chinese onlookers who demanded he stopped filming. In a shocking twist, the police then seemed to back the tourists. And today the piano has been mysteriously cordoned off. All very mysterious. Um, it was quite bizarre. Dr. K, you join me now. I watched the whole video to get a proper context for this. You're just minding your own business. Sure. You're playing beautiful piano, as you do. You're a very talented guy. Thank you, Piers. Uh, people are enjoying it, and, they, yeah. and your shtick is they come over and interact right. with you, and it's great. Um, very harmless and fun. Um, and this is you in action. I mean, fantastic. But then this group of Chinese people in the background with their, with their flags yes. come over and sort of believe they have the right <laughs> to stop you filming yes. and doing what you're yeah, doing. Absolutely. Let's have a listen to what happened. OK. This is our right we're protecting, and that's it. But what right? I don't understand. Image right. We are protecting our own image right. You're not sharing. But this, we're in public. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, but no. we're in a free country, mate. That's true. We're you're not in, in communist country. China now, you know. Oh, I'm sorry. This is reasons now. We have no, we're not in communist China. We're in no, a free no, country. No, 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 We've got a Chinese flag there. It doesn't, it doesn't matter. matter. Show me the Chinese flag. Why are you touching her? I'm Stop not... touching her! Don't touch her, I please. Touch do not touch her. Please. You are not the same age. Please do not touch her. Well, Don't I, I, touch her. It was totally bizarre. He got very angry, that guy. But I also yeah, thought was. the policewoman who came over to you, yes. I didn't like what she was doing either, which was almost no. acquiescing to this. Well, absolutely. She completely took the side of the Chinese. Because they mentioned the R word, um, racist, mm. uh, she melted like a jelly. And... and nothing you said was racist at all. Well, I, th I think she said her, her beef with me was that I said, we're, I said we're not in China now. Yeah. And she found that an extremely offensive phrase because she said that would hurt the feelings of the Chinese around the piano. Mm. And you can hear her whispering, you can't say that. And I said, what? And she said, you can't say we're not in China now. I said, that's a factual statement. And I think when the police deal with these politically correct issues, Issues, they're all over the place because they think they're going to offend someone. Mm. And so she took it out on me. She thought she was, I suppose, virtue signaling, signaling to her masters. And uh, but she didn't. And the irony is, they yeah. were filming themselves <laughs> some kind of commercial. Sure, and they were also filming me. It's been pointed out if you actually right. watch the video. There's a guy in a gimbal from from the CCP. Uh, 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 mm. group that was there who was constantly filming me. One of the girls was filming me, but they said I wasn't allowed to film them and that I needed to delete my footage because they had uh, a disclaimer that no one was allowed to film them in the station. It's, quite bizarre. What's, it's really hit a nerve. Over six million people have yeah. now watched this online. Yeah. You probably never had a reaction quite like this, have you? Well, no. And also, I've got to tell you, I've, just before I came in, Piers, I've just had a phone call. The video is on the verge of being taken down by YouTube because I've had a second strike against it. So someone does not want this video to be taken uh, doesn't want this video to be there. Um, it's about to be taken down. So if anyone's watching this, please download it. And if the video disappears, um, obviously pressure's been put on YouTube. To what does it tell it you about where we are with free speech in the world? Right? Ah, well, this whole thing was a mini parable about the value of free speech. It was a spontaneous live stream. Um, we were attempted to be shut down. Um, but in the end, free speech prevailed. And I think that's why it's got such a lot of traction yeah. around the world, because... Where do you see free speech prevailing in, in a little mini-drama? Mm. Um, and that's what happened. They walked away, free speech prevailed, but now they want to take the video down. The video is on the verge of being taken down. Please, if you're watching this, download the video. And if the video gets taken down, let's kick up a stink. How did the police end up with you over the whole thing? They called the... They, there was about five of them, and one of, the, one of the group went and got the police and said that we've got here a violent thug who is threatening us and is calling us communists and uh, we feel threatened. And he also needs to delete his footage. And uh, the police lady immediately took their side and uh, she gave me quite a hard time. She told me I couldn't say things. She said to stop mm. filming. No, I watched it. I, was, I couldn't understand what she was doing. Uh, oh, she... <laughs> Well, I knew what she was doing. But I, I couldn't, couldn't understand, understand why. it either, Piers. You know, yeah. I th what I... reaction have you? I mean, have you been back since to play the piano? Uh, no, my my friend Terry. I've got a good friend. My friend Terry Miles. Uh, God bless him. He was there today. He's a he's a fantastic mm. uh, YouTuber. He was there today, and there was e even a protest today supporting the piano and me in St Pancras. Free mm. the piano. Terry was there today. <laughs> the piano's back, and I think the, the, the... when are you back there? <laughs> 
I don't know if I should say, Pete. Yes, you should. Do you think I should go back? Advise Absolutely. Me. Give me your... Will you come go with back me? back tomorrow morning. <laughs> you reckon? Yes. You reckon? Of course. You'll be a superstar now. You reckon? You get bigger crowds than Elton John, who I think, <laughs> who I think donated the piano, didn't he? He, he did. And Elton's team has been contacted by the Daily Express to give a comment on the fact that the piano was shut off. Mm. Um, but when they heard that, they actually released the piano, so it's back in use again. But um, when, when are you going back? Come on. Give me a scoop. Piers, Piers... Piers, I, d I don't know if I can. I it's free speech. Spit it out, man. <sighs> I might go on Friday. Friday? This Friday. What kind of time are people are in town? Piers, Piers, Piers. I want to cause Piers, a commotion. Piers, Piers, you're, you're, you're stirring this up, man. <laughs> you're, you're stirring if this anyone up. Anyone from the Piers. Communist Party in China oh is watching goodness. this. Look. I can't tell you when he's performing, but it's Piers. Friday. Uh, look, <laughs> MI5 have told me to keep a low profile. I'm only joking. I'm only joking. But look, I, I'm, I may be there on Friday, but, I, you, you know, it's, it's, a, it's a sensitive situation. Um, the police, British Transport Police, yep. have freaked out. St Pancras have freaked out. But people have... You know what? They should Go all on. just calm down and recognise we live, uh, last time I checked, on, in Piers. a free democratic country... And you are allowed to play the piano where you've played it many Piers. times. We've got to leave it there. Piers. Great God to bless. see you, Brendan. God all the best. Thank you. Get down to some bankers. We're all behind <laughs> you. That's it from me. Whatever. Mr. Barguti, let me start with you. Your reaction to my interview there with Mark Regev. Well, my reaction is that Mr. Regev speaks about Palestinians have to give up. Give up what? I don't understand. And he wants uh, peace. He wants security without ending the Israeli occupation. He ignores the basic facts, which is that Israel has conducted ethnic cleansing against 70% of the Palestinian people, forcing them to become refugees, and is depriving them from coming home for all these 75 years. Second, he's ignoring that Israel is conducting the longest occupation in modern history, 56 years of occupation of West Bank and Gaza. He's ignoring the fact that we are all suppressed by Israel, not only in Gaza, but also in the West Bank. We are being killed in the West Bank. We are being killed in the Gaza Strip. He, spe he, he speaks about the, that the numbers of, of victims is incorrect. Uh, I mean, this is very silly because I think the health ministry has issued the names of everybody that is killed with their ID numbers and their age and everything. So, unfortunately, Unfortunately, what we've heard is the same thing that Israel has been doing for all the last 75 years, repeating the same thing and expecting different results. A very wise Jewish man uh, by the name of Albert Einstein, Einstein said, some, said something very wise. He said, it is absolutely ins it is insanity to keep repeating the same thing and expect different results. Well, actually, Israel uh, thing. Actually, I can tell you he didn't actually say that, but it's a, it's a quote often ascribed to him. But the point is, is there, Douglas Murray. But the point is correct. Okay, I take the point. It, it, he didn't, uh, there's no record of him ever actually saying it. Let, let me ask you, Douglas, about this. You and I debated this a lot. You have a very firm position, completely uh, behind Israel, which I completely understand. Does anything that's going on now in terms of the withdrawal of so much support now from allies of Israel, does any of it give you pause for thought about how this actually ends? Because I'm not sure the Israeli government knows how this ends, and that concerns me. Well, I think the Israeli government knows better than most people, certainly most pundits, about how it might end. Um, I think that there are several things I have to say in reply to Mr. Barghouti, by the way. First of all, when I was on this show last with Mr. Barghouti, uh, he said that he hadn't said something he said, and we actually had to issue a confirmation on the programme subsequently that he had, in fact, said the words that he had denied saying, but that had come out of his mouth praising the so-called martyrs. Um, let me say two other things. Firstly, uh, on the question of the West Bank, I uh, think frankly, you're in this Israel... Person. There are very few people, uh, very few people in Israel who believe that even if you can have a two-state solution, now is a good time to talk about it. I was in the Knesset, the parliament, earlier today, and among other people saw the head of the left-wing opposition, Mr. Lapid. He doesn't believe this is a time to speak about a two-state solution. Why? Because if you gave a, a state to the Palestinians, and don't forget, Israel did give a state to the Palestinians in 2005 in the Gaza, and look what we got from it. Uh, the world got its money ransacked. Uh, the Hamas leaders uh, making themselves fantastically rich and then sending rockets into Israel. So the first thing is, 
even the most left-wing figures in Israeli politics don't think this is a good time to talk about the two-state solution because, among other things, it would suggest that there was a reward for the terrorists of October the 7th. And the reward for the actions of that day was to double down on giving the Palestinians yet another state. The second thing that has to be said about that, if I may, is that on the subject of the West Bank, if you go to the West Bank, as I was again the other night, and if you stand in the hills overlooking Israel, you will see from those hills the lights of Tel Aviv, the city I'm standing in at the moment. You will see the lights of Haifa, and you'll see the lights of Ben Gurion Airport. Now, knowing what Israel knows about what Hamas did with the Gaza, making it into a military infrastructure and firing rockets at southern and central Israel, why on earth would the Israelis give another piece of territory which they didn't have security over in the West Bank to another Palestinian faction, which would have the ability to fire similar rockets at every single part of Israel. And I need to add one other thing, quickly. On the subject of the Palestinian Authority, many people outside Israel seem to think that the Palestinian Authority is, as it were, the peaceable wing of Hamas, or is the sort of Sinn Féin to Hamas's IRA. That is not the case. The Palestinian Authority, as well as being a deeply corrupt e entity, which I don't need to tell Mr. Barghouti about, he knows well about that, as well as being a deeply corrupt entity, the Palestinian Authority that is funded by the Israelis, as well as the Europeans, the British, and the rest of the international community, pays salaries to terrorists. It pays salaries to the people you know? who kill people okay, in well, me... Israel. And All right, that... let me is something absolutely okay. impossible to make peace uh, with. I just I heard Mr. Barghouti use the word disgusting, so, Mr. Barghouti, over to you. It is disgusting. It is well, disgusting. Uh, well, Mr. Mr. Morgan, I think you have to be fair. You can't bring Mark Regev and give him, like, 10 or 15 minutes and then bring another pro-Israeli and uh, make him share the time with me. You have to be fair in giving me enough time because what we've just heard is absolutely rubbish. Absolutely rubbish. Just repeating Israeli mm. propaganda, just repeating faults, and, and I don't agree with him that he has verified what I said. Mm. I don't agree with him totally. And he is repeating the same aggressive and fascist <sighs> speech. They don't want to stay. <laughs> what do they want to do with the 7 million people? Palestinians, 7 million Palestinians live on the land of historic Palestine, equal to the number of Jewish people. What is the solution? They don't want two-state solution? Fine, let's have one democratic state with equal rights for everybody. But no, Netanyahu and his fascist government, he has fascists in his government. He has Smotrich and Bingvir, who call themselves fascists. These people don't want to see a two-state solution, don't want to see one democratic state. So their solution is exactly what they are trying to do in Gaza now, which is genocide and ethnic cleansing. Genocide. It is genocide what's happening, because we are talking about 32,000 Palestinian people killed, including those under the rubble, and 64,000 people injured, 63,000 people injured. That is 4% of the population. If that had happened in the United States of America, you would be talking about 12 million people killed or injured. Is that acceptable? Okay. Is it, is it not that Israel right, is me... occupying the West Bank? Okay, let me Isn't just... Isn't the United States of America saying that there is occupation? Okay, the Mr. Bagu, The international law you. says there is occupation? And to be clear, I've not called for Dr. Wahid to be suspended, fired or cancelled. But I did question whether his views made him fit to serve patients, many of whom, by his own admission, don't even know about his double life because he uses two separate names. Now, he is the head of an officially prescribed terrorist organisation and the whole argument becomes a lot simpler. It is frankly untenable for him to be working in the NHS and if he wants any hope of continuing those duties, he needs to start doing something he repeatedly failed to do on this show last time, distance himself publicly from terrorists and terrorism. Well, joining me now is the author, podcast host and comedian, Constantine Kessie. Constantine, great to see you. Um, what do you make of this story? Quite extraordinary that for decades this guy had been operating in North London as a GP, and yet in his other uh, vocation, he was leading the UK arm of a group that was already uh, considered a terror group by many other countries and is now uh, also considered that way in this country. Right, and you should put some, we should put some meat on the bones of that because you mentioned the, the group has banned in Egypt, Germany and a few other countries. Actually, 
peers, as you probably know, the group is banned in almost every Muslim country in the world. Mm -hmm. Indonesia, the most populous Muslim country in the world, has banned Hizbut Tahrir. Pakistan, Bangladesh, almost every Arab country in the Middle East has banned Hizbut Tahrir. So the question I think we really ought to be asking is, why did the British government allow these Islamists to operate in Britain for as long as they did? Now, Coming to your point about whether he should be suspended from the NHS, as you know, I think both you and I are very wary of people being uh, banned or mm. uh, censored in some way for, for the opinions that they express. But I think most British people would draw the line of being a member or indeed the head of a now proscribed terrorist organization. And of course, we also got to remember there is a difference between a guy stacking shelves in a supermarket and someone who is a GP who would be seeing patients, no intimate details about them know their ethnicity, religion, and have the power of, in some situations, life and death over people. So I think it's a very different case. And I've got absolutely no problem with terrorist sympathizers being prevented from working in the National Health Service. Right. And to, to be, you know, to be clear about what his views were post October the 7th, he gave a talk on YouTube uh, and he said this. Hedin, they gave the enemy a punch on the nose. Mm. All right. And and it's a very welcome punch on the nose. Welcome punch on the nose, which is 1,200 people, including at least 800 innocent civilians, including many children, women, being brutally murdered, raped, in some cases beheaded. That was apparently a very welcome punch on the nose, says an NHS doctor whose salary is paid by the British taxpayer. I mean, I think for that alone, Unless he renounces what he said there very clearly and firmly, there could be no way back for him. Well, quite. And I think, you know, if he were to renounce it, I think we'd all question how legitimate and how sincere that renunciation would be, given his uh, body of work, let's say, on, on this issue. I think there are some people who've been tolerated for far too long in our country. And uh, members of his but Tahrir, which is now thankfully prescribed, uh, if they're not citizens of this country, I think the British people will be asking, why are they still here? Yeah, because we had uh, in October uh, the same uh, Wahid addressing a rally outside the Egyptian and Turkish embassies in London, during which he told the crowd, victory is coming, everyone has to choose a side. Another senior member, uh, Mazir Khan, of the same uh, now terror group, said, what is the solution to liberate people in a concentration camp called Palestine? And they chanted back, jihad, jihad, jihad. We've got a clip of this. What is the solution to liberate people in the concentration camp from Palestine? Jihad! What is the solution? Jihad! I mean, you know, we, there's been lots of debate about the pro-Palestinian marches. I'm going to come to some fascinating footage that you've done for a, a film about those. Um, and, you know, many people are there legitimately marching for peace. I completely get that. But when you have people on the streets of London chanting jihad, 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 that is unacceptable. And you will remember, Piers, that the, the Met Police shamefully, uh, instead of dealing with those people under the law of this country, instead what they did is they said, well, jihad has many meanings and essentially pretended not to understand what those people were calling for. Uh, but as you say, people have a right to protest. People should speak freely and express themselves. And by the way, uh, I think actually, you know, you and I both take a lot of flack for uh, so-called platforming people with the wrong opinions. Mm. I actually think this is a very good example of a situation in which allowing people to speak freely and express their horrific opinions in public is a, a, a thing, a method that allows uh, them to express those opinions and then for the public, frankly, to take a position on whether those people should be serving them in the public health service, should be in our country if they're not citizens of this country. And I actually think you've done a very good job, Piers, of bringing these people into the light and letting them hang themselves with their own rope. Yeah, I mean, people said, you exposed him uh, and you've got him suspended. No, he exposed himself by expressing very firmly his own views, which were supportive of Hamas, which is a prescribed terror group in this country. So that was in itself illegal, actually, what he was doing. And now he is the head of an organisation that's just been designated as a terror group, and that is also illegal. So there's a lot of crime being committed here by this NHS doctor. Never mind anything else. Uh, I didn't expose that. He was doing it himself. <clears throat> I want to bring in now uh, the columnist and commentator, uh, Vajah Ali. Vajah, thank you very much indeed uh, for joining me. Um, what do you make of this story? Thanks I for mean, having me. 
this, this guy is an NHS doctor for many decades. I'm sure there'll be plenty of his patients who'd say he's a perfectly good doctor. What's he got to do with that, that he has these views? But now the UK government has prescribed the organisation that he runs in the UK as a terrorist organisation. Is his position as a doctor here untenable? Well, listen, the show is called Uncensored, and I think all of us agree that in a free society, we should have something what we have in America, the First Amendment, freedom of worship, free speech, freedom of assembly. And unfortunately, there are elements, extremist elements within our society that we tolerate. That doesn't mean that we agree with them. That doesn't mean that we support them. That doesn't mean we endorse them. Like, I'll give you an example. His theory has been an annoyance, an annoyance in my life. They're here in America. They're all around. They have these aspirational dreams of a caliphate that will never happen. And some of them have very hateful views, right? They do not like me at all. In this particular situation, though, you have to realize that several <laughs> British governments have tried to commit uh, Hizmet theory as a terror organization. This is not the first, right? But they haven't found any actionable threats. In this particular climate, in the past three months, as you know, you had your former Home Secretary, uh, Suella Braverman, not really uh, a fan uh, uh, of, I would say, Muslim or Muslim immigrants, who during these protests were a bunch of these nuts uh, sparsely populated protests, yelled the word jihad and apparently praised Hamas. She wanted to expose them, right? She said, look into it. And then now, in the past two weeks, you finally have exposed them as a terror group, quote, unquote, terror group, but there are zero actionable terror threats. So what happens in this uh, situation? It reminds me, Pierce, as an American, of a post-9-11 climate where you had 19 foreign Muslim hijackers who brought down the two towers, and the country lost its mind, and used that as a giant net to go after a bunch of Muslims. We did a registry program. We be uh, deported 13,000 immigrants. We literally had the NYPD peers in this country mm. surveil Muslim mosques, Muslim students, Muslim grocery stores, right? Anyone who said the wrong word. People were kicked off of planes for saying Arabic words. So I'm sitting here and I'm, I'm listening to your conversation and I think you did the right thing. These nuts who exist, right? You expose them, you marginalize them, mm. you bring them on. And then they go into the fringes of society. In America, we have the KKK. In America, if you look at this, there's a capital right behind me. There are people who did a violent insurrection against the United States in that capital. We have elected officials in America who call those people political prisoners and martyrs. They're elected. Uh, people who incited violence against our law enforcement. So I think the, the, what, you, what I hope you're not doing, and I, I feel like you're doing, is this giant net, this giant hammer to crush them I think it will not make things better in, in Great Britain and in Europe, and I think it will give fuel and fodder to extremists on both sides. The right-wing uh, militant uh, nationalists, the white nationalists who attacked the police after Home Secretary Braverman's article, you remember that? And also these fringe elements, I think it will further radicalize them. I don't think this is what you do in a free society, but that's just me speaking on your show called Uncensored.